Every year since 1927, Time Magazine, the U.S. edition, names its Person of the Year. Well, this year, guess what? It's you. It's also me. It's also anyone who uses the Internet. Doesn't that make you feel special? And what's that, a few hundred million people, give or take? And the magazine says we are responsible for, as it puts it, founding and framing the new digital democracy. Our tech analyst, Jesse Hirsch, is here with me in studio to talk about it. <laughs> Hello to you, hey, Mr. Person of the Year. <laughs> Thank you very much. We all know the Internet is not new. So what is so significant about Internet use this year that the magazine, Time Magazine, would do this? Well, I think it's reached a level of maturity in which people's use of interactivity, their engagement and self-expression online, has reached a point that it's mass media, that it's no longer a small part of the media sphere. It is the media sphere. It's what people are turning to on a regular daily basis. And how are those users actually changing? Well, I think it's a comfort level and a confidence level. And people are now more willing to engage the Internet, not just as a personal or private communication, but a very public one, where they're out there finding audiences and looking for audiences. So it's a critical mass of people coming together to literally be the stage. And from uh, all walks of life, all backgrounds, all ages. And all over the world. Right. So it's becoming the global village that it had previously promised to be. You know, we've seen uh, spaces or sites like my, YouTube, MySpace, actually making news involved in political stories, crime stories, uh, news stories, of course, uh, business. Um, what does it mean that the web is so connected in all of those different avenues? Well, it's really the story of a subtext that is becoming universal and ubiquitous, where the Internet is, plays such an important role in how we look at the world that when a crisis happens, we turn to the Internet. We turn to these websites. When people experience something, they write it on MySpace. So if it's a terrorist attack or if it's just an emotional response to a school shooting, we see the wake of all these events happen on the Internet in a way that is in real time and, and reflects human emotions in a way that traditional media have never really desired to do, which I think makes the Internet a different space. Reflects human emotions without us having to actually talk to people live. In that you way, know? it does make it a bit easier. <laughs> so you can actually make up your emotions. You don't have to feel them. You don't have to show them in your eyes and your face and your smile or whatever it may be. Well, and I think to some extent we forget the humanity in the system and that it's such a machine. But, you know, there's an irony here to Time magazine saying that, you know, we are all the people of the year and that the Internet and media in general is becoming increasingly controlled by a small number of corporations. Yeah. You know, we talk about MySpace. It was bought by News Corp for half a billion dollars. We talk about YouTube. It was bought by Google for one and a half billion dollars. So there is a corporate control that ironically mirrors this proliferation of democratic What does expression. that say about us though? You know, I mean, is that the democracy of the World Wide Web being lost? Well, I think in the future the challenge will be for all these people who are contributing content to be remunerated, to actually get a little piece of the pie from the Google millions or the News Corp millions. And already there are people starting to express this online, saying, I'm putting my videos online for free. I'm putting my diary online for free. You're making advertising mm -hmm. off, you're making money off my content. I'd like a cut, I'd like a micropayment, let's say, of that overall advertising revenue. And the reality would be, uh, no. Well, no, the reality <laughs> is that the people who introduced this model, the audience is not committed to YouTube. They're not committed to MySpace. They could go to the new site tomorrow, and the site that offers this type of micropayment system will be what we'll be talking about next year. That's interesting. Because they'll really capture the audience in giving them a little bit of a reward for their self-expression. So capitalism can continue. In theory. In theory. We'll see, the communist revolution via YouTube may be upon us, we don't know. You've been on your computer way too long, Jesse, you know that, right? I do. Okay, um, thank you so much. Thank you.